Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at weapon selection and ammo tracking. So you can see I've got this friendly little green slime here, and you can move you up here and pick up this assault rifle, because, I don't know, of course you can. And uh, I can click to shoot that, and we've got a cool little hit scan uh, weapon. Um, and if I shoot too much, I'll, I'll run out of ammo, I've got no ammo. Um, but if I run, pick up this thing, this is a plasma gun, and I can kind of hold this down, fire this. It's got a bit more recoil than the other gun, and obviously behaved totally differently, but if I run out of ammo with that... Um, I also can't shoot. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at, like how you can set different kinds of weapon um, in a kind of an, an effective way, an easy to manage way in Game Maker, and uh, also track how much ammo you have for any particular weapon. And that also allows for the case of just being completely unarmed, as you can see at the start here, with no weapon at all. All right, so let's get to it. So here is our weapon object, just with three blank events. Okay, these are what we're going to create today: the create event, staff event, and the draw event of our weapon. It works very similarly if you've been following my uh, platformer series to the weapon we've got going on an air gun that you can kind of aim that moves around independently of the player. Uh, so if you're following that series you can drop the system, I think I haven't tried this, but I'm pretty sure you can drop this, this system into that game pretty much right away um, and it'll work pretty much perfectly just off the bat. I don't think you really have to change much to get us to work. Um, but what we're going to do, so the create event, we're going to write the definitions of the different types of weapon that we can have, the assault rifle, the plasma gun, and being unarmed, and just do some basic setup stuff. In the step event, we'll do all the kind of like uh, movement of the weapon, having it follow the player around and aim where the mouse is aiming, and also obviously the shooting, if we're able to shoot and we've got ammo, etc. And uh, in the draw event, we'll obviously just draw the gun and make sure we're drawing the right sprite in the right place, etc. Okay, um, a few other things have already been set up, like uh, our... A weapon pickup object um, and child objects of that and I'll show you a bit about how that works towards the end so you can see how to actually make those pickups appear in the room um, and just importantly as part of demonstrating how to change a weapon on the fly but you'll see more about that as we get to it and a couple of sprites in here um, that are important I guess the uh, the weapon sprites themselves uh, for the pickups and uh, the versions of them that are being held so the ones that actually have the little green hands on them okay um, but we don't need any of that stuff, so let's close that workspace down and just reopen uh, O weapon and uh, come to the create event and this is where we'll start. Okay, so I'm going to maximize this first of all. In fact, I'm going to right click, I'll close that, I'll right click on O weapon, hit open all event scripts, uh, just so we've got step, create and draw up here, because these are the only ones we're going to need, we'll put them in order like that, and just make sure you've got the create tab open here okay this is the first one that we're going to use so the first thing we want to do is define our different types of weapon now we could do this in lots of different ways and the way i'm going to do it is to combine an array with some ds maps okay so we're going to have an array of ds maps don't worry too much if you don't know what that means um to start with defining the array well first of all defining which weapon we're going to define first is unarmed okay so it's going to be a blank weapon effectively um, we're going to write weapons, and that's going to be the name of our array, so our list of different weapons. Open square bracket zero, because it's the first entry in the array, okay? Array just being like a list of variables, if you didn't already know that. And what this is going to equal is ds underscore map underscore create, okay? Uh, what we're going to put in our very first entry of the array is a DS map. Now, what is a DS map? DS map is quite similar to an array in that it's also can be thought of as a list of variables, but rather than being like uh, in order of integers like this, so like having entry 0, entry 1, entry 2, and so on, and the order being kind of important and the number of things you've got in it important, um, it's a bit more arbitrary than that, okay? You have keys which are linked to values and you'll see what I mean by that in a second when we start adding things to this map. So what I'm gonna what am I gonna put in this map? Okay well this map is gonna represent our unarmed weapon. I'm gonna type DS map underscore add. This is to add a value to that map. Uh, the map I'm adding to is weapons zero. Okay that entry. Uh, and the key as you can see down here we want a key and a value. The key is going to be sprite. So what sprite we want for this particular weapon. And the value is going to be minus one because it's unarmed. We don't actually want any sprite in here. Okay, and you'll see how we use that in a bit. But for our assault rifle, for example, it would be, what's the name of that? Uh, S uh, gun underscore AR, for example, would be our assault rifle. But we just want this as minus one. 
So you can see how this works. We've got keys, which denote the, uh, a useful name that we can give to a value so that we can reference it later. So we want to know the sprite of weapon zero. We can find that and know that it is minus one. So it's different to how arrays work, but they're, they're a similar sort of idea. So we're going to add a bunch more stuff to this um, uh, this DS map now. So I'll probably just speed this up um, just so you can see me having added all the things and I'll go over what they all are. Okay. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste them in because I have them over here. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy and paste. Boom. Um, these are all the different statistics for this weapon. Okay. Same line every time. DS underscore map underscore add weapon zero comma name of the thing and the value. Let's go through just all of these so you can know what they're all for. Okay. Uh, recoil is going to be the amount of uh, the gun or weapon or whatever moves backwards a bit when you fire or use it. Might be might be zero if you don't want that to happen at all. Recoil push, that's like a pushback. So like how much the actual player moves back due to the recoil if you want that at all. Uh, damage, we don't actually use damage, but it's there to, um, well, in this tutorial and the demo I've set up here, I don't actually use this, but we put the value in just so you get the idea of like that would obviously be the damage you would deal. Projectile is the name of the type of projectile you shoot. Okay, so down here I've got O bullet and O hit scan for the two different types of gun. Um, but I don't need either of these uh, for this one because this is unarmed, so it's minus one. Okay, uh, start up would be the length of time in frames uh, for the weapon to start firing. Uh, length is a special one. That's the length of the sprite from origin to the far right. Okay, which I think you could work out doing some math rather than uh, you could probably do like X. Uh, minus B box right or something like that, or B box right minus X or something like that. Uh, well, no, it won't work exactly like that. But um, as you can see here, I've just worked out like um, uh, the origin point being here on the gun and how long it is to there. That's to know where to create our bullet, okay? Because uh, we don't want to create a bullet at this position. We would want to create it here. So we want to know this distance so we can uh, we can adjust for that, okay? Let's come back to that event in here. Um, cooldown would be the length of time in between each shot, okay, so you don't want to literally create one every single frame, or if you do, you would set cooldown to zero, and that would work. Uh, bullet speed would be how fast the bullets would actually move, the hitscan one doesn't need this at all, um, obviously your arm doesn't need it at all, and automatic is whether or not you need to hold down the button to attack, or whether you can, um, or whether you have to, to press it every single time you want to shoot, okay. Um, it's automatic, semi-automatic, right? Uh, so unarmed, I'll let most of these are zeros and ones. So let's uh, copy in now the assault rifle stats, okay? So underneath, uh, AR, weapons, one this time, okay? So exactly the same block of code, but this time we've got some actual stats in here, okay? So the sprite is the assault rifle, uh, recoil three, recoil push to zero, um, damage one, although it doesn't actually do anything, it's just for demonstration purposes. The projectile is our hit scan thing, um, start up to zero, I don't think, because I want to be able to fire it instantly. That's more for if you wanted to do a melee weapon using this sort of system, and it would create like an invisible projectile in front of you, similar to if you've watched my melee tutorial, how that would work. That's sort of the main reason you would probably have a start up on a weapon, but I guess some projectile weapons would have start up as well. Uh, length 24, cooldown 3, bullet speed 0 because it's hit scan, and automatic false, so you have to click every time, okay? And then let's put the plasma gun. In as well, so I'm just going to copy that, Oop, paste underneath here. So weapons two. I mean, obviously you can pause this and, and write all this in at your own pace. Uh, don't feel like you have to be typing as fast as I am copying and pasting for obvious reasons. Um, so the recoil is a bit more, damage is more. It doesn't matter. Uh, the length is the same, but there's more of a cooldown in here, and the bullets have a speed because um, because they're actual sort of moving big bullets rather than a instantaneous hit scan. Okay. And automatic is true here, so we'll be able to hold down the button and fire. Okay, so once we've added all these, so you would just add a block of this for every type of weapon that you want in your game with all the different statistics for them. Okay, you can also modify these on the fly, but I'll show you more about how you can do that sort of thing later. Next up, we want to define what weapon we have right away when this is created. Well, it's going to be zero, right? So I'm going to type weapon. This is singular weapon, not weapons. Uh, just weapon equals zero, okay? Um, which means that when we reference one of these stats, we're referencing weapon number zero, which is going to be this, okay? Uh, or if we change weapon to one, it would be referencing this, and if to this, and so on, okay? 
Uh, next up is ammo, okay? So in order to track the ammo that we have, that's also gonna be an array. Um, we know how long the array is gonna be by the number of weapons we have, because we want a entry in our ammo array for every weapon we have. We know that there's three, not one, two, but we might wanna, <laughs> we, might, we, we might wanna add uh, more weapons later. So um, in order to not have to change this value over and over again, I'm gonna write in array, and let's go length 1D, uh, weapons, close bracket, close square bracket, uh, equals zero, okay? So that's gonna take uh, the weapons array, which we know is three entries long. Um, oh, actually, it can be that minus one, can't it, yeah? Because it'd be naught, one, two. So it'll take uh, entry number two uh, and set it to zero, and because of that, because we've set entry two to zero, it knows, and we don't have a z entry zero or one yet, it will also initialize those two. So we'll get array zero, uh, uh, entry zero is zero, entry one is zero, entry two is zero, okay? So the easiest way to set up a blank array is to set the largest entry uh, to whatever or to zero, and that'll set all the other ones to zero as well, okay? Um, uh, but we don't want all three to be zero. I'm going to set ammo uh, zero, the, the first entry of the array, to be minus one, okay? Um, the reason for that is because when we want to be out of ammo, zero, uh, we don't want to be able to shoot anymore, um, but unarmed has no ammo. And if you made a melee weapon later, for, I, I know that wouldn't matter so much here, what's the difference between unarmed having no ammo and minus one ammo, right? Um, but by giving it minus one ammo, and if we made a melee weapon or something like that in the future, uh, we're going to use the value of minus one um, to make it so that you, you could attack anyway. So you can attack at minus one, but you can't attack at zero, and if you attack above zero, it reduces by one, so it never goes past zero if you have positive ammo. I hope that made sense, okay? Basically a way of setting a weapon to have infinite ammo, is to set it to minus one, okay? Um, and, and you'll see exactly how that works when we get to the actual shooting part. Okay, so that's that basically set up, and now what we need to do is actually uh, assign one of these weapons, because we set up the statistics for these, um, but now we actually need to put one of them into the weapon itself. Okay, so we just have a bunch of DS maps of stats at the moment, we don't know which which ones we're actually using. Um, and because referencing DS maps like on the fly can be a little bit slow because they've got to compare these text strings, um, what we're gonna do is just swap these out into local arrays uh, when we actually change weapon. And then we've got them local and we don't need to look up what it is in the DS map every time, okay? So I'm gonna get all of these values. So I'm gonna type var uh, wp underscore map equals weapons weapon okay so the temporary variable here um wp map you see it turns yellow uh meaning it only lasts for the sake of this create event then we get rid of this variable we don't need it anymore um just to find the weapon that we currently have selected by whatever we set i could put zero in here but just in case you know we want to try it out starting with the assault rifle etc we could just change this one value um and that's going to get the ID of this DS map. And then I'm going to do uh, recoil. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll start with sprite, I guess, since that's our, our first one. Sprite equals uh, DS map underscore find value. Okay, open bracket, WP map, comma, recoil. Okay, and you might have guessed what this does. It reaches into the the array entry of whatever weapon we have which is zero finds that key that we set sprite and returns the value opposite and puts that value into sprite okay so sprite will end up equaling minus one you might wonder uh why i've put weapons weapon in a var instead of just say putting it here okay because that would work just the same but uh, by doing it this way, we actually have a faster way of writing this line, and um, you'll see what I mean uh, now. <laughs> uh, when I write sprite uh, equals, instead of doing it this way, we can write wp underscore map, open square bracket, question mark, space, sprite. 
in quotation marks, okay? This line does the exact same thing as this line, okay? This question mark is what's called an accessor, okay? It's just, um, easiest way to think of it is just as a quicker way, more or less right now, of accessing and changing these rather than having to use a specific dsmap find value every time and, and write that specific function. You can just write this shorthand and, uh, and get it that way. Uh, but what you can't do is write sprite equals weapons, open square bracket, weapon, close square bracket, open square bracket, question mark, sprite, okay? That, um, that doesn't do anything, okay? It doesn't work right. Um, it seems like it's fine here, but you would actually get a compile error if you actually tried to run that. It doesn't know how to deal with the multiple square brackets in a row, okay? So the only way to get rid of that is to bury the result of the array into a temporary variable, okay? Just to give us a quick way of writing this, um, just to save our fingers some effort, more or less, <laughs> okay? I'll leave this uh, sprite one as the basic one so you can kind of see how that works. Um, but then I'm just gonna do all the rest using uh, the accessor, okay? So I'm gonna write recoil uh, equals WP map uh, recoil. Uh, if I can type, there we go. Uh, recoil underscore push equal WP map square bracket question mark recoil underscore push. And you can see where this is going. So now I'm just going to um, skip ahead and put all the rest of them in. So that's all of our statistics copied in. Um, you may have noticed and wondered before I accidentally wrote recoil in here for the sprite instead of sprite. Um, I was just being an idiot, obviously. Uh, I want to find the value of sprite. The sprite, not the value of recoil. The recoil goes in recoil, obviously. Okay, um, and I've corrected that now. Um, so that's now set all of these um, variables actually local to um, O weapon to be the values they should be based on whatever weapon we have equipped. Okay, and this block of code here is just exactly what you just need to call um, every single time. Uh, you, oh, sorry, including that top one, every time you want to change weapon, okay? So to, in order to change weapon now, all I would ever need to do is write, say, weapon equal to, and then run this block of code afterwards, okay? In fact, we could bury this in a script if we wanted to. In fact, I might just do that. I'm going to create a script, uh, change weapon. Um, copy you. For argument zero. Okay, um, so now all we need to do is type change weapon, um, open bracket, uh, and then, then put, the put the number of weapon that we want to select in, and this will do all the rest. Okay, so I can just do that at the bottom here now to change weapon zero. Okay, and that will assign all of those values to be uh, the, the appropriate values based on weapon zero, which is our unarmed weapon. Okay. Okay. There's three more variables I want to set up here. Um, uh, normally I suppose you might do this in the variable definitions window, but just to keep things simple and also transferable to game maker 1.x, um, we'll just do them here. Uh, that's current CD. Okay. So that's your current cooldown, uh, zero, um, cause cooldown is, the value you want to set a thing to, not the, the your cooldown, your weapon itself. Uh, current underscore delay for minus one, and current underscore recoil. And you'll see how we use these to sort of create cooldown and a delay between shooting if you've got a start up and so on, and, uh, and, and, and recoil for the gun so we can make those sort of a bounce between values, okay? Simple stuff. Uh, so now let's move, that's everything. That's everything we need in the uh, the create event. As I say, every time you wanted to find a new weapon, just copy this block of code and just add some new things to it. Uh, now let's move on to the step event. Okay, so what do we need to do in here? Well, we need to do some basic stuff just in terms of making the gun uh, follow the player around and point in the right direction and all that kind of thing, okay? So the basics of that are first of all, x equals o player dot x. Okay, it's just gonna follow our player object around and y equals o player dot y. Uh, direction, this is an important one, is going to equal point underscore direction, which returns an angle based on two coordinates. Uh, our current x and y coordinate and uh, mouse x and mouse 
y, which returns the coordinate, the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the mouse in the room, okay? And that will make the gun point toward, well, it'll make its direction value the angle between where it is and where the mouse is. Um, in order to actually make it uh, vis visually point, we have to change the image angle, which we'll do uh, in a second. But first of all, I'll type if direction greater than 90 and direction less than 270, um, that means it's pointing somewhere to the left. Okay, I'll put the graphic up and you can see how it works. Uh, image y scale equals minus one. Okay, and that's going to flip the sprite vertically um, just so that it looks correct on either side. Otherwise, it would look, uh, when we rotate the gun around, it would look upside down when we were facing to the left. Okay, um, whereas we're the right way up no matter which way we're facing. Okay, so we can flip it if we're facing left. Um, else image y scale equals one. Okay, and image angle, this is the thing to actually make us rotate visually equals direction so it just equals that particular angle uh, and that's all we need to actually make it face the right way and all that in fact um, I think just based on the fact that a weapon has a default sprite in fact if I run this now uh, okay it won't show anything first of all because um, if I try and draw self just quickly in the draw event and run that Uh, yeah, you can see it's on the wrong layer and everything at the moment, uh, but we thought that there. But you can see that the gun is uh, pointing in the right direction now. Okay, uh, let's get rid of that. We don't actually want that at all in the draw event. So back to the step event now. Um, let's handle actually shooting some stuff. So var mouse b first of all. Okay, this is a variable checking whether or not. The mouse button is pressed okay and the reason we're making it a temporary variable first is we're gonna either set it to uh, the current state of our mouse button or we're gonna put it to the pressed function which will check to see if it was pressed uh, this frame so it was not pressed last frame but it was pressed this frame which will be the difference between automatic firing and not uh, because we have all those local variables in there now um, I can just type if automatic can you see that turns blue that's one of our properties uh, so if automatic is true, okay, uh, we can set mouse b to equal mouse check button nb left. Otherwise, mouse b equals mouse check button pressed nb left. Okay, and that's the difference between those two. One checks whether the button is just down, and one checks if the button is down but wasn't down the last frame. Okay, so for whether or not it's just been pressed. Um, uh, then after that, we want to write if mouse b. Okay, so if mouse b returned true or not based on that stuff. If uh, current cd equals zero, which it does at the start. Uh, current cd, and my typing game is not on today, equals cooldown. Okay, um, so that sets our current cd to be the current cooldown, okay, and so our weapon starts cooling down, or it doesn't quite right away yet, it'll start ticking down from um, uh, from when delay also reaches zero, and we've actually fired, you'll see what I mean. Uh, current delay equals stop. So that's the number of frames until uh, the gun actually goes off. So that starts as firing, and based on whatever our startup is, it might be zero, which it is in all of our weapons. Like I say, I put this in for the sake of maybe doing melee weapons later. Um, but it, uh, if it's zero, then we'll carry on and instantly shoot a projectile, as you'll see in a second. But if it's more than that, it'll tick down until eventually you'll shoot, okay? So if current delay is zero, uh, which it will be at the start, and projectile does not equal minus one. Okay, so projectile is minus one when we're unarmed because we don't actually create a projectile or do anything, there's no shooting to actually do. Okay, but if our projectile is a kind of object, then we know we need to actually make one in this sequence. Okay, um, then what we want to do is check to see if we have any ammo. Okay, so if ammo of the current weapon 
does not equal zero. Okay, so it's not equal to zero. Not it's greater than zero uh, or anything like that. Uh, we have to check specifically that it doesn't equal zero. Okay, because uh, what we want to do is be able to use negative numbers like setting our unarmed to negative one, which we've done, to qualify as infinite ammo. Okay. Um, and for that to work, we need to check to see if ammo is not zero um, in order to fire, so that we could later set a weapon to have minus one ammo, still be able to shoot, um, but never run out of ammo, okay, and that gives us infinite ammo, just allows us that possibility. Um, so if ammo is not equal to zero, then we can fire with instance create layer x plus, right, so this is where we're actually going to create our projectile. So we know that there is a projectile type to make. Um, where do we actually want to make it? Well, we want to make it not quiet at just X and Y, uh, which is where the gun is, but we want to do it uh, X and Y plus that length of value that we decided earlier, okay? So for AR, I think, because the origin is at 9 and the width is 32, 32 minus 9 is like 23, uh, I think I set it to 24 though, the length, just so it would be like right, j just over the edge. Um, so like, if we did it at X and Y, the bullet would appear here, but we don't want it to appear there, we want it to appear here. Okay, uh, so we know how far we want to shunt it from that position, but how do we do that just with an X and Y? Well, we use length dir X, okay? So X plus length dir underscore X, which we provide a length, which is length, uh, the length of our gun, and a direction, which is direction, the direction we're facing. So that will shunt it. Um, the amount of x it needs to, it'll move it by the amount it needs to on the x-axis to move that length in that direction, okay? So if we were at a sharp angle, like downwards and diagonally, it might move it a bit less than it would move it if uh, our angle was this way, for example. And we do the same thing with uh, the y component, okay? So y plus length, uh, this is going to be quite a long line, y, open bracket, length, direction, okay, and then the layer ID or name is projectiles, I've already made a layer, you can make one yourself just in the room, um, projectiles layer that's just above everything at the moment, you can do that however you want to do your particular depth sorting, that's not really what this tutorial is about, uh, <laughs> let's close that, but that's the layer I'm going to make it on. And uh, the object that we want to make is projectile. What, whatever object we happen to be storing in there. Okay, close bracket. Um, and then this is a with statement. So open more blocks. Uh, so what do we want to do with this bullet that we just made? Well, we want to set its direction to be the direction of our gun. So direction equal other dot direction. And we want to set its speed to equal other dot bullet speed. Okay, so it gets the bullet speed that we have buried in this object and the direction that we have in this object, okay? And applies them to the bullet that we've just created. Then we want to subtract one from our ammo. So ammo, weapon, minus equal one. Okay, so if our ammo was one, it would go to zero and then we wouldn't be able to shoot anymore. But if it's minus one, we'd still be able to shoot because minus one does not equal zero. Uh, and we just keep going down below minus one to minus infinity. Um, and, it, and it doesn't matter because as long as we're not zero, we can still fire. So that's how infinite ammo works. Okie doke. Um, that's everything we need there. I think I've missed a bracket in here. Yeah, just right at the end there. That's one I miss out a lot when doing with statements. Uh, make sure you get the right brackets in, but GameMaker will tell you if you haven't. Okay, um, so that's made our bullet, and that's reduced our ammo appropriately, okay? Um, regardless of whether or not we've done that, though, we're going to apply our recoil. So with O player, so that's just sort of then just to give you the effect of that recoil to kind of make it clear that you're out of ammo and it's not that just the game stopped working or whatever. So the gun will still move a bit as if you're trying to shoot it, but nothing will actually come out. I just mimicked in real life the action of shooting a gun, even though I've and, and the recoil, even though there's no webcam or anything on the go in this. Oh well, uh, <laughs> imagine I did that. HSP minus equal length the underscore x other dot recoil underscore push. 
uh, other dot direction. Okay, so if you're familiar with my other tutorials, I tend to use HSP and VSP for doing movement speeds in those directions. You might be using V speed and H speed or whatever you want. Um, but this is what I'm doing to just apply a little bit of speed to our player um, in the direction that we just shot. Okay. Um, assuming that we have some recoil push, that might be set to zero. Uh, and current recoil is also going to equal recoil because in theory we've just shot. Okay, our delay is zero, our projectile minus, is not minus one, then we've just fired. Set our recoil to be whatever the hell it needs to be. Okay. Um, after that, uh, there's not a whole lot left to do in the staff event. Uh, current delay equals max for whichever is bigger, minus one, or current delay, minus one. Okay, because we know when we reach zero, the gun goes off and we shoot. Um, so we want to go beyond zero to make sure we don't keep shooting after current delay reaches zero. So we subtract one from it every frame uh, until it hits minus one, and then we sit at minus one. So if it's above minus one, it means it's ticking its way down to zero. If it's zero, we fire on that frame. If it's minus one, we're not shooting at the moment, okay? Uh, and then if current delay is minus one, so we're not currently shooting, current cooldown can start, we can then start to tick down our cooldown, which is the gap in between the next time we're allowed to start shooting again, okay? Equals max zero for this one, current CD minus one. Close bracket, semicolon. Alrighty, and then uh, the last thing we need to do is reduce our recoil every frame, so that approaches zero again, okay? So current recoil equals max, uh, whichever is biggest, zero, or floor current recoil times 0.8. So we're just gonna multiply current recoil by 0.8 every frame um, until it's less than one, uh, because when it's less than one, um, flooring it will set it to be zero. Okay, so I make sure we get all the way to zero. But if it was say uh, three, I don't know what three times 0 0.8 is, like two point something, uh, three will turn to two and then two will turn to one and so on. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and that reduces our recoil, uh, which doesn't actually have any effect yet, but we'll sh show you how the recoil has an effect in a second. Uh, depth, last of all, just to make the gun actually show up in front of the player, as you noticed it didn't before, equals O player dot depth minus one. The player I'm using just a, a depth equals negative y thing in order to sort of position it in front of stuff on the screen, just a very basic z ordering kind of thing. Uh, and that's all we need for the step event. And then in the draw event, last of all, um, and then we can actually see this all working <laughs> after this, so we're almost there. If sprite does not equal minus one. So assuming that we've got something we want to draw, a weapon of some kind, okay? Draw sprite ext. Now this would be an absurdly long line if I were to do this function all on one line. Um, you may have seen me do this before, but you don't actually need to do a function all on one line. You can actually split it up over several lines, which is what I'm going to do now. So I've opened the bracket, so I'm in the function declaring these things at the bottom, sprites, subimage, etc. But I can do this all across multiple lines. So the first thing I need is the sprite. Well, the sprite is sprite, funnily enough. Uh, the subimage, the frame that we're on, is going to depend on the image index of the, this particular object as it animates. Um, X and Y are going to be the special ones here. So X minus length the X open bracket current recoil uh, comma direction. Okay, so it's going to take X and it's going to reduce our X coordinate by the amount of X that we would have to move to move our current recoil in a given direction. Okay, by minusing it, it means we go in the opposite way. What we could do is say plus. Uh, direction minus 180, um, so it goes 180 degrees the opposite way, but I just find it just feels more elegant to me, as, <laughs> well, probably just because it's shorter as a line, uh, to write it like that, and it's not a semicolon at the end, sorry, it's a comma because we're in the function here. Um, so that's the x coordinate, okay, and the y coordinate is just the same, y length minus length, the y this time, current underscore recoil direction. 
common mistake to make when you're doing length through x and length through y make sure you actually do do x and y very common to do that um it's a difficult error to spot sometimes and when things are just uh, you just get things facing completely the wrong direction so make sure you get that right um image underscore x scale image underscore y scale again just filling these in because x scale and y scale are going to be whatever we need them to be uh, the reason we're not just using draw sprite and using draw sprite ext is so that it takes these into account otherwise it doesn't okay uh rotation is image angle as we already know uh image blend not that it matters particularly uh is the the, the color blend and image alpha well, the alpha, although I suppose we could have equally just written one, but in case you want to manipulate your image alpha, we've put it in. Okay, and that is, uh, oh no, sorry, and then close the bracket at the end there, okay? So that's, it's exactly the same as writing it all in one line, just makes it a bit easier to read than how insanely, like how long would this even be? Yeah, you can see it, it gets pretty massive if this were all to be on one line, so that's, but you don't have to, you can just keep it all separate like that. Now if I run the game, this should be absolutely everything. So we've got no gun at the moment when we start off because we know we're setting a weapon to zero. Um, so I should take a look before I show you in the game. Our O weapon pickup does, uh, when we collide with the player, does exactly what I said before, okay? Um, uh, it checks, uh, it opens the weapon object and it just sets all of these stats appropriately. Now, uh, I don't actually need to do it this way anymore because I wrote this script to change weapon, didn't I? So what I can do is say, um, does change weapon do a with statement? No, it doesn't, okay. So in here I can just say change weapon, still with O weapon here, but change weapon to be um, whatever weapon is in O pickup because I just have this as a parent object, so that's weapon set to one to weapon, okay, and ammo weapon uh, plus equal 20, so just add 20 uh, ammo to the weapon that we happen to have selected, okay, um, because you could do this by any means, so you could press like, and if you didn't want to do it by picking up a weapon or you wanted to add like being able to swap between weapons on the fly uh, with like number buttons, you could say in O player, um, if pressing the two key, change weapon with O weapon, um, change weapon two, okay? And that's the, the simplest way to just change a weapon. So you see it just sets weapon to be whatever you pass into the script and then calls all those values out appropriately, okay? And then just afterwards, we'll give ourselves some ammo so that we actually have something to play with and then destroys the pickup itself. And this object here uh, is just a child object, OWP Plasma, it just inherits everything. Literally just a, a child object of uh, Plasma with nothing different other than in variable definitions. I've got weapon, set to two instead of one. My mistake though, one thing I did wrong here, I wrote change weapon weapon, it should be other dot weapon, okay? Um, and then once we've done that, because obviously it's with weapon, so you wanna get the, the weapon from the pickup, not the weapon from weapon, otherwise you've changed weapon to itself, which is obviously no good. But then I can walk over to the assault rifle, pick it up. We've got our assault rifle, which is uh, non-automatic, so we have to click for it, and that's about 20 ammo, so it runs out pretty quickly, but then it's that hit scan projectile. I can pick this up and hold it down, or click if I want to, to shoot these plasma things until I've shot 20 of them, and then I'm all out of ammo, okay? So there you have it, that's a basic weapon selection system, and uh, basic setup for managing different kinds of weapons. As I say, you can do basically any kind of weapon with this, you can do melee weapons, do anything you anything you can imagine really. Um, and if you want to add more properties and more behaviors to your weapons, the best way to do it is to add a new property for it and um, manage the way the weapon works based on that property. And then uh, that allows you to mix and match and, and make uh, lots of new, cool, interesting and unique weapons. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. These last few weeks I've seen a lot of increased support for my Patreon and as a result we've hit our new milestone of $1000 and in order to celebrate I'm removing all ads from this video. This video is just completely ad free and always will be. Uh, thank you very very much to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thank you in particular and in no particular order to Doan Techben, Dan Inomule, Andreas Tabak, Ryan Senecal, Giles Montgomery, Harold Guidry, Nathaniel Walsh, Louis R. Pereira, Nick Slavish, Stephen Hagen, Jason McMillan, Seanathan, Crispy, Owen Morgan, and Bowser the Dog. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. 
super excited now that we've hit a milestone that more or less allows me to keep making these videos for as for the foreseeable future, which is pretty awesome. If you want to see these videos all be ad free, um, the next milestone isn't that far off of uh, isn't far off of this one. I'll nearly need another five hundred dollars to make that happen. Um, you can do that by popping over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs and giving me a couple of dollars on there every month. You get your name in the credits and a bunch of other cool stuff. Okay, thanks for watching. Glad you enjoyed this. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and if you did, then I'm glad. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.